Guys, ammunition for this video has been provided by Brown Works Inc., manufacturer of fine custom handgun grips. If you guys are looking for very unique, very customized handgun grips for your favorite handgun, contact Mark at Brown Works Inc., link in the description below, and create something beautiful for your favorite handgun. And don't forget to tell them Wyoming Gun Project sent you. What is going on, folks? Welcome back to the channel. So as you can see, today we are going to take a look at the Springfield Armory model SA-35. And if you can't tell, this is a high power clone. This is Springfield Armory's offering in the high power clone game. So there are a couple companies out there that are doing this, um, <clears throat> Springfield Armory being one of them. I think TSOS just introduced a line called the Inglis. Uh, Gearson's big on this. Uh, there's been a couple other brands. Uh, Browning or FN, I should say, discontinued this model. This is like the classic Browning from back in the day. Um, and they discontinued this model. They brought out a new one, which looks different and is quite a bit expensive. For example, these go anywhere from about 650 to 750, somewhere around there. You could find them for about 650, 680 online, but then after you get transfer, tax tags, title, all that stuff, fee to your FFL, you're right around 750. And that's about what I paid for this with tax included, got from a local shop. I figured, you know what, I, I, after I did the math and after I figured it out, it cost me about $30, $35 more than if I would have bought it online. So I rather would have given the business to a local shop, which is what I did. I ended up giving the business to a local shop, bought it there, because uh, we need those guys. We, we need the local shops to stay in business. If it costs me an extra 50 spotter, I'll usually buy it in town. Uh, now there are some places where it's just ridiculous. I'm not spending a hundred to two hundred dollars more, but fifty to seventy-five. Sometimes I'll just say, you know what, screw it. But here it is. It is in nine millimeter. It is the classic Browning high power lines. It's very cool, man. It's very well made. Finish is great. Uh, these sights are obviously different than like, let's say the old high powers. Let's see the sight picture there. It's got the white dot front sight and the U-notch rear sight with the serrations. That's what your sight picture will look like. Um, it is single action only. It does not have some of the features that the old uh, Browning high powers have, which I appreciate Springfield Armory for removing, mainly the magazine safety. So if you're not familiar with high powers, they had a, again, this is a double, I mean, a single action only pistol. So you cannot, the hammer has to be cocked to the rear for you to fire it. Has a thumb safety a la a 1911, but it's a little bit different X, you know, uh, also as a disconnect holder, I guess you would, a slide holder for, for when you disconnect it. Um, if you're not familiar, real high powers, Browning high powers have magazine safety. So when you take the, remove the magazine from a high power, uh, you can't pull the trigger. On this one, you can. So they remove that, that's awesome. Also, high power, a lot of the old high powers had like a little spring right here in the magazine. You stick it in and boom, it would shoot that magazine out. But that was because the magazine safety would drag on the magazine. It would also affect the trigger pull too. So you get the benefits of all that. Now, is this a high power magazine? Not sure. This one has 15 rounds. Regular, like World War II military high powers had 13 rounds when they first came out. So I'm assuming it'll take high power magazines. I'm not sure about that. Uh, I did see a few reviews on this pistol, but I didn't want to go crazy. I didn't want to taint my opinion on it. Um, I had been looking at one of these for a while and I was not sure about it. And then I saw, like I said, I went to the local store looking for, I was actually looking for a Bodyguard 2.0 because 
I am very interested in that pistol. I think I'm going to pick one of those up. But this was also on the list. And they had this there for a fair price. And I said, you know what? Let me get it. Grips are standard wood. They are very beautiful, though. They are really, really nice looking grips. And if you'll notice here, they, I mean, they are blended perfectly with this back strap. Guys, so far, initial impressions. And this is a brand new gun. You are seeing, I just got home with this bad boy. It has not been fired yet. We are going to see the first shots together in the live fire portion of this review. Uh, thumb safety is one of the negatives, and I knew it when I bought it, but I'm going to, if somebody doesn't sell an extended uh, thumb safety spring, which I think they do, Wolf probably has one, I'll just bend this one out and put hella tension on it. So it clicks on, if you can hear it, it clicks on pretty good, but then it's kind of like here, it's just kind of mush off. You could get it to click. It's not as positive as I like, though. It's kind of mushy. Um, but other than that, fit, finish, I, I got no complaints. You can do the, the front press, which I know people like, keep your finger away from the barrel. Yeah, it's a little bit, but you can do the press check with the front of the barrel on this one. Um, the only real complaint I had, and like I said, it's a spring tension, Thing. There's two complaints I have about this pistol. One, that's not positive enough for me. That it's really not. But I can fix that. I can I can adjust not fix it because it's not broken. I can adjust that to be more positive, either by replacing the spring or you know stretching that one or see what we can do. And the fact that it only came with one magazine. Now I was talking to the people at the store, and we found it kind of funny that there was a gentleman there that was purchasing a M&P 2.0, like a desert tan. It was, it was uh, I forget, but it was a mid-sized M&P. Gorgeous gun. Came with two mags. The clerk was telling me the XD10s and some of these other ones only come with one mag. This one only came with one mag. A shield came with two mags. I don't know what, I don't understand, you know, uh, 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 Smith and Wesson's thinking, uh, Springfield Armory's thinking. I, th sometimes they they mix it up, uh, you know. Like some models will get two mags, other models will only get one mag. I don't know what that is. I know it's cost cutting, and I know these companies have weighed it, and they're like economy's rough. I get that, but the economy's rough for everybody, guys. The economy is rough for your customer too, okay? And they want two mags. Now I got to go out and find another mag, which I'm sure won't be hard, but still. Um, so that's kind of a negative. And then this like just kind of mushy safety, um, is a negative, but again, I can adjust that. Otherwise fit finish trigger pulls fantastic on this thing. Now, let me show you something. Obviously, if you've watched this channel before, you know that I'm fat. Okay. I'm a fat bastard. My problem with high powers have always been, even when I wasn't fat though, I got fleshy parts on these hands, even when I was younger, cause I've shot high powers in my twenties and they still bit the shit out of me. Just like standard 1911s. Uh, I did another video where I talk about a 1911 I owned that was made in 1918. It used to bite me. I always used to get the mark right there. So one thing that I, we shall see, but one thing that I've, I do not like and did not like about high powers was that they would bite me. Now it's my understanding that this one has had the hammer lifted up a bit and recontoured and the beaver tail may be a little bit extended to try to avoid so that there's a bigger space right here from biting fat people's hands. Cause I like to choke up on the guns. I like to put my thumb on the thumb safety. So we'll see when we're going to see together because I'm going to take this sucker out to the range here in a minute as soon as I'm done and we're going to shoot this sucker. So that's one of the reasons that is honestly one of the reasons I stayed away from high powers for so long is they would bite the crap out of me. And, the, and then the 40s, oh my, they were really bad because of the recoil of the 40. But supposedly this, they have corrected this one with that little, those little adjustments right there. We shall see though. Um, but let's get a weight and then let's get a trigger pull and see what that is like. 
All right. 29.53 ounces and with the factory supplied 15 round magazine, 32.11 ounces. Not too bad, not too bad. I mean, it is an all steel gun, so we expect that. And then on this one, oh, come on, give it to me. There we go. I keep saying I gotta replace the batteries in here. I looked it up, it's a 2032 or whatever that is, a flat coin battery. I thought I had one, I don't. So I still need to, to do that, but let's get trigger pull, 322. I told you the trigger's good on this one, man. 468, that might've been a little bit of a harder pull. 232, let me just do one more because it's kind of, uh-oh, low, <laughs> let me do one more. Come on, baby, come on. No, it's not gonna give it to me. So we gotta go with the three we got. I definitely have to replace the batteries in that sucker now. But the trigger is fantastic. I mean, look at this, just, just a tiny bit of take up. And then hardly any movement or creep. Take up, it really is a good trigger. So. Let's get this bad boy out to the range and just see how it shoots. All right, folks. So as you can see, we are back out on the range, this time with the Springfield Armory model SA-35. We have 115 grain Winchester white box, thanks to Brown Works Inc., the uh, ammo sponsor for this channel. Again, thank you, much appreciated. We got our standard steel. C-Zone steel down to 25 and a 10 inch round, a little popper plate down there. These are the first shots out of this gun. So I don't know where it's hitting. We're just gonna see how it shoots. So let's just fire this bad boy up and make sure it freaking works, man. Guys. Shooting impressions, it's a high power. It shoots just like a high power. If you've ever fired a high power, they are some of the best shooting, smoothest shooting nine millimeter handguns you can buy out there. And we're gonna see if that, I don't know if that's the, right here, if that's the hammer. It doesn't hurt, but it seems to be leaving a mark. So we'll check on that at the end of the video. Uh, I couldn't feel it biting me. Normally, normal high powers, I could feel them biting the heck out of me right away. I couldn't feel any pain, but you can see a mark there. So we'll see if that progresses. Accuracy portion of this review. We have three rounds of 115 grain Winchester. We have the Springfield Armory SA-35. We'll go back seven yards and we're just gonna see how it shoots. All 
All right, guys, not bad at all. Shoots awesome. A little bit low for me. Again, I was putting the white dot here. I like to cut the center in half and hit the bullets, have the rounds hit right there. So we're shooting it just a touch low, but I can work with that. That's, that's excellent though. So let's go get the final thoughts. All right, folks, final thoughts on the Springfield Armory SA-35. I think it's great. It shoots great. Uh, the trigger's fantastic. As you saw, it's accurate with Winchester white box. Sight picture's easy to pick up. This gun's just easy to shoot. Trigger is fantastic on this gun. It does bite me though. Uh, it does not bite me as bad. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't bite me as bad as the other, the, the real high powers. They used to draw blood by this time, by 50 rounds, um, I'd have been drawn blood. It does pinch me though. But I think it's because the way I shoot, I, I, again, I have fat hands because I'm a fat ass, but also, yeah, I think if I was shooting it like this, it wouldn't be as bad, but I put my thumb like a 1911 on top of the thumb safety and it really, I don't know if we can see it here. It, when I, when I do that, it really plants it up in there and bites me. Um, so that's a combination of my grip and the gun. Uh, like I said, that's not bad at all. I cannot feel it. Normally, which is the reason I got rid of my high powers. I just didn't enjoy shooting them. Um, normally, that would be a blood blister or would be bleeding by now. But this is not too bad at all. I don't even feel it when it happens. Uh, but other than that, as discussed, the tabletop, one magazine. Okay, Springfield Armory, that's boo-boo. This thumb safety is still mush. I will adjust the spring tension on that. But other than that, fit finish, everything is fantastic on this gun. It's a gorgeous looking gun. It's a faithful reproduction of a high power. And it was reliable. It shoots fantastic. Guys, I'm telling you, this is one of the smoothest shooting nine millimeter handguns out there. It really is. So this one gets a thumbs up for me. So there you have it. Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you next time.